Joining us now from Austin, Texas, presidential historian and CBS News consultant Douglas Brinkley. Doug, good morning. Good morning, Charlie. So what are we learning about uh, Jackie Kennedy? Well, that uh, 50 years ago on Valentine's Day, she became America's sweetheart, and 50 years later, she still is. Uh, people love to listen to her, uh, listen to her diction, watch her poise, try to understand what's going through her mind. Uh, that Charles Collingwood uh, White House tour was just very important in TV history, uh, not just because you were attracting a, a female audience and not just because of 80 million viewers, but it was syndicated all over the world. People saw it in India and Russia, China, uh, and it, it sort of made the White House and the Kennedy, particularly the Kennedy White House, mm. very, very in and very, very chic. Really, uh, we've never had the, the word chic applied to the White House until this mm. particular tour. What's interesting to me is that we had the release of some of the audio tapes of interviews done with her, and she comes through that as a much stronger personality with opinions uh, about politics that she said she got from her husband, but opinions of other people as well. I mean, she was not in any way a shrinking violent. No, and this White House tour, when it's what this new re release is showing, is just how she orchestrated this. Uh, you know, she, she actually won an Emmy statuette for this, um, uh, you know, performance really. Uh, this was, they had a Hollywood director watching it. Collingwood would interview her and then disappear on the side and you would just have the first lady talking. And she, she purposely picked out what objects wanted. You know, the White House wasn't treated as a national monument before Jackie Kennedy. It was sort of just mm -hmm. a place with furniture. And she kind of pulled in things from the warehouse, uh, got American heirlooms there and really modernized the White House uh, in a way that's uh, quite remarkable. In the recent document came out, you could see that the First Lady looked at the way they did things at Monticello, Jefferson's home, or Mount Vernon, Washington's home, but she took the view that the White House isn't dead or static like those two homes. Yes, you want to honor history, but you want to have modern touches because it's a living institution. Doug, you kind of touched on this as well. She also changed the way we view the role of the First Lady and modernized that. Well, in, in, in TV, really is a game changer. I mean, we're going to be coming into the convention season, you know, late this summer. In 1952, it was uh, television cameras brought into the conventions that changed things. In 1960, Kennedy Nixon debate, TV plays a big role. Um, it, it coincides this White House tour with Collingwood that brought, made Americans Jackie Kennedy crazy. Right a week later, John Glenn orbited the Earth. And it becomes 1962, the year of Camelot and Kennedy. In 61, if you, you know, she had raised John Jr. He was born at the end of uh, 60. She did do the famous trip to Europe. But Jackie Kennedy, um, you know, and the Jack, John and, or Jackie and, uh, and Jacqueline Kennedy, the Kennedy family, didn't have that great a year in 61. Bay of Pigs, um, Berlin Crisis, Khrushchev scolding the president in Vienna, but by 62 and with this interview, it started the golden year of Camelot and it ended in the Cuban Missile Crisis with Kennedy outfoxing, most historians feel, the Soviets. By 63, that wasn't such a great year. She was pregnant, Jackie Kennedy, and lost a child and many people don't realize she was pregnant with Patrick. He only lived a few days and he died. Douglas Brinkley, always good to have you with us. Thank you.